Hey gang, on today's show, we're doing another unboxing, so stick around. Hey gang, welcome to the show. This is The First Layer. I'm your host, Richard Cleveland, and I am with you three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, where we talk about the world of 3D printing. And today is no different. What we're going to do today is take a look at what's in this big box from Anycubic. This is the 4Max, which is a brand new printer uh, in the lineup. So let's get started and just start digging in. I've got another table here so that I can put stuff down once we... Uh, once we get to it. Now, the Formax is a kit. And being a kit, there's lots to put together. So this video is going to be split up into two parts. I'll just pull out this extra table here and we'll slide this down. There we go. And maybe we can fold that under as I wreck everything behind me. There we go. Fold that under. Hey, we have a robot. Man down. Man down. There we go. You can sit back up there. So we got a little piece of packing foam on top. We'll grab the first layer and we'll bring that out. And then we'll grab the second layer. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in this box. All right, so we're going to get rid of the box now. Toss that down there. We don't need it. All right, so inside the box, we've got everything that we need to put this thing together. And it is actually done quite well. A nice, thick color manual. Okay, so we have a full color manual. Everything is laid out, tells you how to put it together, where to start, and takes you all the way through talks about the software. Let's examine some of the parts in the box real quick. So in this box we have all of our acrylic panels so we don't need that right away. In the other portion we have our power supply. I really like what they've done here. They've put, uh, it looks like there's a control board in there as well. All of your uh, parts come out. We have a display here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start laying out our parts and building the frame. And we're going to start with the, the main frame, uh, which is all right here. So we're going to grab all of the parts that we need, which are these wonderful corner pieces. And we got four of them. And then we have four top pieces as well. And there we go. We have all of our pieces to do that. Now here's all of our rods. We don't need those immediately, but we are going to just put them off to the side on our work area. Now we're going to grab all of our extrusion. We have different pieces of extrusion, different sizes, and as soon as we get them all out of here, we'll show you what they are. So there's three different sizes of extrusion with this setup. And there we go. So, according to our directions, of course, we need to grab our X aluminum profiles, which these are 345 centimeters. That's these small ones. And we have four of them. And then we have four of the next size up, which is 370. And then we have four of the 300 or 485 millimeter pieces. So to start the frame, what they want us to do is take an X and a Y. And that is going to be do, 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 the X and the Y, which is a 345, another 345, 
There we go. Make sure they've all got holes in them. So we need two of those, and we need two of those. So we should find all of our hardware here in one of these little packets because there's tons of hardware. So of course they don't label anything. Well, they do label some stuff for you, but they don't. Oh, it's S1 is the one that we need. And I'll bet you it's right underneath here. All the usual suspects in this setup, along with a ruler. And there's our bag of S1. Now, let's see how far we can zoom this out. There we are, we're fully zoomed out here. So let's see if we can get some of this up and running. So what we're going to do is we're just going to insert the short ones, which are the 345 millimeter rails, into the bottom. There and there. And this is the this is the easy part, putting all of this stuff together. So we're going to open up our our S1 screws, and it looks like we need a uh, five millimeter wrench, which I just happen to have, or a five millimeter socket. Oh, that one's too big. One smaller than that. Of course, I put my tools where I couldn't reach them. That one's too big. Now, you know, if I was a smart guy, I would just look to see if they had a wrench in their tool pack. Because that's what smart people do. So this comes with all of the tools that you're going to need to put together your 3D printer. And there is the one that we need. And we'll just get that loaded in there. Now it doesn't say to put any washers in them, so I think we're okay in that route, in that respect. So we're just gonna put all these in and we'll come back after we get this bottom frame assembled. Okay, so we got the top and the bottom of the basic frame built. Now we have to, of course, assemble it so that we've got both sides done and we are now going to just drop these in oh one on either side there's for some reason it looks like there's glue all over this like that spray on glue i don't know why but yeah you never know so which way did i put that last one in And last but not least, let's put this one in here. And they're all sat down. Now, you'll notice that we now have knockouts done in um, the top part of the frame. You want to knock these out because you're going to have to get to these very shortly. So uh, we're just going to let everything ride together here, get it all lined up. And scoot it into place. So here we now have the fully assembled frame of the 4MAX and what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you've popped out those little covers that go over these areas here that you make sure that they all line up. And you can see here that we've got them all lining up as we go all the way around the frame. They are all there and ready to go. So now we're going to move on to the z-axis and the z-axis is pretty involved so we're going to of course consult our manual now you guys are doing exactly what i'm doing you're going to be doing this too and um, i'm going to make mistakes you're going to make mistakes and as we make mistakes together we'll figure it out so first and foremost what we want to do is we need to take uh, one of these spacers which is these guys right here and i'll go to my overhead so you can see what they are you can see here we're going to now 
put these guys onto the frame. And this is for our Z axis. So we'll go back to this camera. And what it wants us to do is use an M4 by 10, which is in this little baggie labeled S2, from what it tells us in the, in the directions. So we're going to open that baggie up. And we are going to pop one of those through there. Now these look actually quite short. M4 by 10. Wow. They sure don't give you a lot of room on these, do they? So we're going to put that on there. Do the same thing on the other side. And they don't really kind of show you exactly which way they go in. But I'm going to assume, well, first of all, let's put the nut on the proper way. There we go. I'm going to assume they go in like so to give you proper spacing, just like that. And we'll use the proper wrench. I'd much rather use my wrenches than the wrenches that they give you because I have all of the proper wrenches. And we're going to need that one. And we're going to need probably that one as well. And there's a couple more in here that I have to pull out. We'll need that one. So we have five of the six that we need. Let's get the other wrench here. It's got to be in my box here somewhere. This is why having a toolbox is so important. And putting your tools away when you're done with them is so important. Because the one wrench I need is the one wrench that is not in my box. Of course not. That's the way it goes. All right, so, so much for that idea. Sometimes it happens. This is why you always want to pay attention to where your tools are and what you're doing with your tools because look where I found that wrench. Right where it's not supposed to be. It should be in here with this stuff. So, or nut driver, or whatever you want to call it. So we're just going to tighten these up now. I think I can get you guys a, a view using this camera here. I think I can, I think I can. All right, so you can see we're just tightening these up now. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom as well. Grab another two of these. Now, the nuts that we're using, they're called hammerhead nuts. And that's what these little guys are. They're called hammerhead nuts. And what they do is they turn in the channel to lock your part in place. But you do have to make sure that you put them on correctly. And I know my fat head is in the camera shot. I'm trying to keep my head out of the camera shot. And this is how they should look. You see how there's a little notch there? It looks like a little step. That should be towards your part. And now we're going to just pop this one in up here. And we'll tighten it up. And what those will do is they will spin and grab the channel. Once they've done that, you're in pretty good shape. All right, so we're going to get the other two put on, and then we'll come back and install the rods and install the uh, Z-axis plate. So we have all of our brackets in. Now we have to get our rods and our base plate. 
And the rods that it wants us to have are the 481 millimeter rods, which we need to check and see which ones those are. And based on the look of these, based on the look of these, I'm going to say it is these two big ones right here. So we got a couple of those. And they sit in there like so. But first, before we do that, we have to put the base plate on, or the print platform, which is this guy right here. So there's our print platform. Ride those up through there. Ride this one up through there. This is the tricky part. We also need to put on our limit switch, which we have down below here. Here's our package of limit switches. And there's two limit switches in here. We're just going to grab the one with the biggest hole. You can see there's another one with a smaller hole on it. And what we're going to do is we are just going to take this limit switch and we are going to put it like so. And we're just going to tighten that up a little bit. See, that's what happens. Just going to tighten that up a little bit. Right about there. Drop these in the top. Very strange how they ask you to do this. I don't get why they want you to put in those top ones. It seems easier to me that you would put in the bottoms, but you would leave the tops out so that you could come back and pop, you know, pop them on like so. That seems easier to me. I don't know about you guys. Pop these guys on. Get them into those bottom holes so that it's all lining up. And of course, it doesn't make it easy. So, you know what I'm going to do? Bear with me here, guys. Is I'm going to take this and put it on its side. That just seems way easier to me. This one should pop right in there. There we go. This one should pop right in there. We may have to adjust this one a little bit. Get our Allen key in there. Of course, that one's too big. Gonna loosen off that Allen key so we can drive that right down. Now the best thing is, is to flush it up. Get these things flush and then just tighten up those bottom ones. Tighten up those bottom Allen keys or those set screws, pardon me. And then take those pieces that we had earlier and just drop them back into the channel at the top. That seems way easier to me than the way that they have it in the manual. And once you do that, it seems much easier. At least it is for me anyway. Now remember, I'm not always right. I could be doing this totally wrong. We don't know. But if I am, I'll be the first to tell you that I did it wrong. There we go. Drive that one down so it's nice and flat. Tighten those up. Now we have our Z-axis pretty much installed. So we are now going to slide that up. 
because according to our directions, um, they want us now, once all that's in, they want us now to put in some of those M410s and drive the, uh, the motor up through the plate, which is this guy right here. Dun, dun, dun. And where exactly they've got that sitting is another story. They do have it sitting right there on the bottom. So I'm going to thread that up through there. I'm going to add some screws to the bottom. Then we're going to tighten up these these set screws so that that's all locked in place. I know it's kind of like a comedy of errors when I'm putting stuff together, isn't it? I find it hilarious. You guys may not. But this does look like a machine that could be a pain in the butt to do depending on your skill level and again remember a lot of this depends on your skill level if you are not inclined to as mechanically inclined as uh, we are here in the studio and some days you know you watch our videos you would you'd think otherwise heck some days I think otherwise Okay, so we got those in there. We're going to make sure that that sits right where we want it to sit. That one's in. You got to kind of finesse these things into place. But once you got them in there, it's easy. And that should line up completely correct. If we bring this down all the way to the bottom it's going to help us align that motor mount. And we're just going to use our hand to bring this all the way down. So now we know where that motor mount is, we can tighten it up. We'll make sure all of those turned. And for the most part they did. This one didn't do quite such a good job. So we're just going to loosen it off and then we'll get it turned. There we go. There we go. Now it's turned. Alright, so let's move our tools out of the way. So this is where we should be at now. If you've been following along or you're thinking about getting this machine, this is where we're at. This is your, of course, your lead screw. And if it's perfectly aligned, if you do this by hand, there should be no binding. If you feel any real resistance, see how that's starting to go down by itself? It means that we've got this perfectly square, which is exactly what we want. And of course, we're going to move that limit switch as well. It's probably going to end up over here somewhere. But see how that's actually going down a little bit on its own? If I just do that, we've got a good alignment on that bed. So we're happy. If you're happy, I'm happy. Now comes the really difficult part, because we're going to start working on the y-axis. On the y-axis, we have three motors and we have a whole bunch of pulleys and we have a whole bunch of other stuff so let's get all of that out so we need S3 so we need the S3 baggie and we need a Y motor okay so this is how we're going to make up the rod that goes in the back we're going to need the little belt that came in with this which is right there 
and now we are going to install this into the machine. Um, and if we, swip, if we flip this around, we know that the belt goes onto that side. So I'm going to kind of do this backwards. I'm going to slide this in here. And then I'm going to slide it back into this hole. Now, you'll see that you've got these two little, those two little um, bearings, flange bearings, that come with it, should line up and go right into that hole. It should meld right into that hole. And don't do that. Because then you get messed up and you don't know where anything goes anymore. And why these flange bearings don't want to fit in there, I think I'm going to probably put those in by hand. See if I can get them in. There we go. That'll make life a whole lot easier, don't you guys think? Yeah, don't listen to the guy who's putting it together because he doesn't know nothing. Make sure you do it right. There we go. Get that in there. We got our belt. And you know what we're going to have to do? What I didn't want to do. Pull all of this off. Slide it in through this side. So we can get it through that bearing. There we go. Without knocking the bearing out, of course. And if we're looking at it from the back, we should have the belt on this side, which is where we want it. So we need that little spacer that we took off. And we did take off that little spacer. There it is. But we need to do this one first. Do the big spacer. Do that wheel. Do this one as we get closer. And then we do this one. Now what these spacers are doing is they're spacing the, uh, the belt and the drive pulley um, away from the bearing. And there we are. We are in there. We are in there. And there's not a lot of room there, guys. I'm going to try and even it up as best I can, but there's not a lot of room there. Get that belt pulled back over here. Ah, that's why they want it the way they do. Things make sense when you do them the right way. Of course, now I have to try and get that past there without bending the rod. Or pulling it out. Like I just did. Now, you guys know that kits are great for some people. Kits are great not for everybody. And today seems like one of those not great for me days. But that's okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. So right now we're just going to tighten up those little uh, grub screws that are on the, on the gears. And that should uh, get us right in the ballpark of where we want to be. And you do not want to bend any of this, any of these lines at all. Okay, so now we've got the other side to do. We are going to take these little guys and we're going to put them in first. Those are those little flange bearings. Now, doing the front is going to be much easier than what we did on the back side. 
I am sure of it. Getting those bearings in there is a little tight. And that just goes down, 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 down. And of course, my arms are too big to get through anything. I used to do that back in the day when I was doing carpentry work. Stick my arm through stuff, walk through walls. Some people didn't like that very much. All right, so in the same manner that we did the other one, we're going to do the front one. So I'm going to ride that one through the bearing. Through the pop that bearing out of there. We don't want to pop that bearing out of there. All right, so we'll grab the rest of our goodies here at the bottom. We need the spacers. Yep. Make sure that we've got all of our grub screws in place. That one has two grub screws. This one only has a single grub screw, so I want to make sure that this one has two grub screws. And some of you might be saying to yourself right now, man, that looks like a pain in the butt to put together. But you know what? Again, and I've said this before, if you read the instructions and pay attention to the instructions, you will have no problem putting together any 3D printer. Again, pay attention to the instructions, then you'll know what you're doing just like I did not do there. And we'll put that one on there, put that one on there, and we'll finish driving that through. Now, again, it's very important that you get those bearings in there perfectly, because if you don't, they're going to go on your rod, not square. And you definitely want them to be square. All right, so we've got the, the bar in. We're just, again, going to tighten up them grub screws. And once those are tightened up, it will hold our whole rod in place. And remember, we're going to be putting caps over top of where all of these are anyway. So um, once that happens, then we should be good. All right, so we've got that part done on the y-axis. Now all we have to do is locate that motor. And the motor is going to sit right down here, which they want it to sit in towards the back. So it sits in here like so. Doesn't really tell you where they want the connector. Oh, yes, it does. OK, so we've got the motor. We've got the motor mount. The motor already has its pulley on. We're going to grab two screws and drive those in there. But we're going to wait a second. Let's uh, get this motor mount on first. And as we look at the motor mount, this is the way they want that motor mount to go on. I'm going to just go to the overhead. And you can see this is the way they want that motor mount to go on. So this is going to be in line with where your connector is. They give you the proper M3 screws to mount this. There's four of them. Now, if you wanted to dampen this, you certainly could. You could use dampeners uh, on this to dampen any of the noise that might come off of 
the printer, but we're going to see exactly what it sounds like before we make any sort of uh, accessory, add any accessories or upgrades to it. And dun, dun, dun. doesn't look like we have to do a whole heck of a lot when it comes to wiring on this thing either. Because once the panels are on, you don't see any of it. All right, so that's on there. We're going to take these two. We're going to take these two screws. We're going to put them through there. And again, we're going to put on some T-nuts. Get those started on there with our fingers. Trying to hold stuff and do this all at the same time is a little difficult. Now I normally will uh, try and do all this. I'm sweating up a storm again today. I'll normally try and have all this stuff ready to go when I put it on, but again, we have to be careful. So we're going to drive that belt in there. We're going to drop those T-nuts in there. And we're just going to make sure that that is taunt. And grab our proper screwdriver. And again, we're just going to tighten up those nuts. That sounds like it's good. Again, we'll probably have to come back and, and tighten them up later on. There we go. Now it's grabbing. Or is it? Yes, it is. There we go. There we go. So that's on there now. That seems like it's, that seems good rolling that bar smoothly we're okay so now we're going to go to the s4 bag so we've done s1 s2 and s3 those are out of our hair right now in the s4 bag you're going to notice that we've got some timing belts and we've got some timing belt uh, tensioners as well so what do we need we need s4 we need the other limit switch which we had earlier which is that little guy and then we also need, oh, are you guys ready for this? This is going to be fun. We need this big bad boy right here. Ugh. That guy. And this, if you don't already know, is our X gantry. Um, so this is where our head is located. Um, we're now going to drive through these two rods, the two rods that we have left, and the result of what it looks like. So what they're saying for us to do here is get a limit switch put on one of those rods. Yeah, let's not put that up there. Let's put it down here where we know what it's, uh, it'll be safe. So we've got to take these two rods, and I don't see any. Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> see there's smaller holes right down here? See those? There are smaller holes right there. Right there. You guys can see them right on the front. So these come through the back like so. Thread them in. Boy, they make this idiot-proof. Even I can do it. There we go. Get that one in there. All right, so we've got that going. They want us to put the limit switch on first, and the limit switch is going to go right up in this corner there. I believe that's where they're telling us to put it. Just double-checking. So the limit switch will go at the front, which is right up here. So we'll get that limit switch out, which is right here. And we'll just put it on this rod. First, we're not going to do that. We need to put this guy on first. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to grease up the bearings a little bit before we slide them onto these rods. So we're going to grease up the bearings that are in the uh, x-axis here. Um, and what we're using is Loctite LB40 or 8042 white lithium grease. You can get this from uh, most uh, hardware stores, or if you can't find it, you can always get it through our good friends over at spool3d.ca. All right, so let's uh, put a little bit of grease in there. We've got, uh, got some here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this whole assembly, and I'm just going to put a little bit in the end of this one. Let's see if I can get that in there. There we go. And the end of this one over here. There we go. And now what's going to happen is the stuff that we put in here is going to push through and actually get to this bearing over here. So we'll just kind of rest this up here for a second where it's not going to fall. Move that down here. Get our axis lined up. Get these in there. You want this to go in as straight as possible. And the reason for that is, is because if you don't put it in straight, what will happen is you will get a little bit of, and we've got a little bit of lithium grease on the end there. I'm just going to take that off. I'll just get my assistant to grab me a paper towel. There we go. So I'm just going to take that off my fingers. And the excess, I'm just going to take off the end of the rod as well. The reason you want those to go in as straight as possible is because you can knock the little ball bearings out of the um, bearings. And that's why they're called bearings, because they slide on little tiny ball bearings. So we're going to get the limit switch put in. We're just going to kind of rest it on there. And now we are going to push these rods through one at a time until we center them. Of course, this one fell out. There we go. Once we get them centered in there, then they will stay. And now we'll just get this one moving forward and get that one in that hole. And we'll just kind of line it up here so we don't go too far. <clears throat> Let's move this forward a little bit. And I'm just going to take my end of my screwdriver and try and push that through just a little bit. If it's not going through, you know you got a problem. So back it out and try again. Um, bum, 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 bum. Something with a little bit more torque to it. That one just doesn't seem to want to sit properly, for whatever reason. Oh! So, let's have a look at it over here again. Why does it not want to sit through there? It is seating into the front one, but for whatever reason, it's not going through the back one. So, what we're going to do... We're going to try this the other way around. I'm going to pull this rod out, and I'm going to seat it in from this side. Or at least I'm going to try to. Ah, oh, now I see what's happening. So I'm going to just let that dangle there while I have a look around this side. Oh, that's exactly why, because there is a... there is a small grub screw there. So now I have to see that grub screw. So apparently there's grub screws in the frame. 
that they don't tell you about. Which is not unusual. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. So we're going to loosen off that grub screw. That's why we can't get that through. Grub screws they didn't tell us about. And of course, they don't show you that in the in instructions and the destructions. So we're going to take that rod again. We're just going to pop it through there. Bring this axis back up. Line it up. And get it lined up the best we can so that we don't knock any of those ball bearings out. And there we go. There we go. All right, so let's get our switch back on there. We'll tighten that one up later. And we'll just get that located in there. And now we lost this side. This is the biggest pain in the butt I have ever encountered. There we go. Now we'll just even it up in that hole there a little bit. Use something to help us. Push that back just a hair. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let's tighten that back up. Might even in. There we go. Now we're going to tighten those grub screws back up. And we'll just push this one back just a hair. There we go. And now we'll just tighten that up. And there's a grub screw over here. Once we've got those set, we can tighten up all these little grub screws. And now all those rods are set and they should not go anywhere. We've got good movement. That works for me. We're going to decide how that's going to go on. Well, guess what I did? I put that on backwards. So, what do we do? We loosen up the grubs once again. This is what happens with frustration. We'll loosen up this grub screw. And we pull that back a little bit. And we swing that around. And we put that back in right about there. It's not a hard fix. You know, things happen when you're putting together 3D printers. Be nice if I could see that grub screw. There we go. There, that one's in. You know, getting older sucks. Can't see small things like you used to. There we go. All right, so we got that in. 
Now it's going to hit our limit switch. That's exactly what we wanted. But we're not going to tighten that limit switch up just yet. Okay, so now that we've got that on, it wants us to put this limit switch 26 millimeters away from that wall. And that is why they give you this handy dandy little ruler, I'm assuming, which is done. in inches on one side and millimeters on the other. So it is saying right here, in case it wants us to go from that wall right there. Okay. So now we just have to go 26. And that is about where she goes. Right there. And now we're just going to tighten that. Not with that one, we're not. We're just going to tighten that up. There we go. So we now have our limit switch in the right spot. Now, of course, we have to uh, put in our belts and this is where you're going to run into the biggest problem is putting in belts and our belts are in the s4 bag and we're going to start with one side and then go to the other and they also have these little i don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see these but they also have these little tensioners belt tensioners which we're going to show you how they go on in a little bit as well so let's grab the belts, and the first belt, these are already pre-cut so you should not have to cut them at all. And according to these directions, what you do is you just slide them in here. Now, how you slide them in, you have to line them up. See how that belt's going in there? Right there. So you want to pull that belt all the way in. If you need to, grab yourself a small little tool and just kind of push it in there. So it's nice and straight. Then we're going to wrap the belt around this pulley. Make sure that you're on the outside of that, that bottom bar and we're going to get that up in there somehow wow they don't give you a lot of room in there let me tell you and then you want to run that belt through see if you guys can see that a little bit better you can see got that belt coming through same on the back, grab that belt, run it through and around the pulley, pull it as tight as possible. Now you don't have to be Hercules here because we are going to put on a belt tensioner, but you want it enough that you can slide it in there. And this is the toughest part, is guiding this in to that little channel there. This is all laid out for you in the instructions as well, so don't be afraid of getting one of these kits. Now this is a Cartesian based machine. You see we got a little bit of slack there in that belt, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this thing right to the center. I'm going to grab a pair of pliers. Uh, where did we put my pliers? We had them out earlier, didn't we? My little needle nose ones. Okay. 
We had some out, I thought. That's okay if you make noise. So these aren't easy to get on. They're a bit of a pain in the butt, actually. Great. So with these, what you want to do is you want to bring them underneath like that. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but you want to bring them underneath. And then just grab that front claw and get it over your belt. They are pretty tough to do sometimes, so once you got it over, that's what it does. And now that's actually giving us a lot more tension. Now I could probably tension this up a little bit more and I might just do that before we, uh, we continue on. But I'm pretty much in the center, so now when I go this way, it doesn't go all the way to the end. And when I come this way, it doesn't go all the way to the end as well. So, let's go ahead and do this side. And I'll show you what I mean when I'm, I'm trying to get this thing a little bit tighter. Is I'm going to try and go about halfway with this one. We'll go back to the front camera here. I'm going to go about halfway with this one. I'm going to bring it around this pulley. And this pulley is much easier to get at than the other one because we're not in the way of, we don't have that uh, limit switch in the way. But on this side, we have a bar in the way. So, and there we are, you see And I'm just trying to get this belt a little taut on the top so it's not so bad. And I could probably do a little bit better job if I just let that go to the back. There we go. And now I'm going to pull this. Still, I could probably get a few more. There we go. That seems better. Gives me a little bit more room to work with. There we go. And that one's pretty tight, but we are going to put one of those um, tensioners on it as well. Again, we're going to go back around the middle. Gonna hook one side. Make sure that the coil of the spring is underneath. They're a little bit finicky, so you just have to just have to play with them a little bit. And if I would stop dropping them, I'd be in better shape. I've never found a really good way to put these on, to be honest with you. But I'm sure somebody out there who's watching this video is saying to themselves, wow, he can't even put a spring on. We'll grab my pliers again. And we will find out where that opening is. It is right there. So we're going to stretch it out, pull it around, and then we're on. And there we go. So we have equal tension on both sides. I think we're doing okay. Wow, that was a uh, core X. Well, we've got the X gantry in. We've got the Z axis in. We've got the Y axis in. What does it want us to do next? <gasps> Now we get to do the exciting stuff. We get to make sure that this limit switch over here is exactly um, 62 millimeters 
from that top piece. So now let's just have a quick peek at that limit switch. So it should be on the outside. So we're just going to loosen that up because we tightened it up earlier. I'm going to loosen it up here, turn it around. And this is where you want to have an extra pair of hands if you can, but you don't always have that luxury. So we are going to bring this up to 62. And I think we're right about there. Oh, now, of course, I moved it. So I'm going to try it again. And we are right in the ballpark, right there. And now we're going to just tighten that up, square it up a little bit. And we'll double check it just to make sure. And, yep. We're right at that 62 mark. Where are we? Uh, no, we're at 63. So we're just going to loosen it up. Just bring it up a hair. Now this is not the scientific way of doing it. Now you could get out your calipers and make sure that that was perfect. Now we're right there. We're there. Okay, you could get out your calipers and make sure it was perfect, but you know what? Not everybody's going to do that. Okay, so off camera we did a little bit of stuff uh, to get things ready for um, installing the panels. Uh, we put the door on to the front panel, that sort of thing. I mean, that's stuff that you guys don't really need to see. But right now what I am going to show you is the wiring. And I've already put the three clips. There's only three little L brackets or Z, Z brackets that hold this unit on. This all comes as one unit. So the power supply, your board and everything is right here, okay? So where we're going to start is with the proper uh, cables that we need. So for the uh, Z-axis, what we're going to look for, and I think we can bring this camera down just a little closer, and maybe tilt it back a little bit. We'll zoom in. Okay, so on each one of these cables, let's see if that'll zoom in on my hand. You're going to see that each one of them has a little tag on it. Say X, and that one will have a Y on it. This bundle here will be your Y, um, your Z, your Z end stop, and your filament detector. Okay, so all those are, they're all labeled very easily, and now we're just going to go ahead and connect them. Okay, so according to our instructions, we need to grab the one, the bundle that has the Z, so we're just going to push this off to the side. We are going to plug in our motor first, so let's find that. That's our Y motor. So we have our Y motor, which is right back here. I know you're not going to be able to see me for a second, but that's okay. I'm saving your vision. So there is our Y motor. Now we have our uh, Z motor, which is going to be right over here. So I'm just going to plug that in down here on our Z motor. Turn this so you guys can see it. So all we're doing now is we're taking this and we're just plugging that into our Z motor right there. And, you know, at this stage we're trying to have a little bit of cable management at the same time. This is for our filament detector. So we're just going to put that off to the side for now. And let's just unravel it so we don't have a, it tangled in other wires when we go to do that. So we'll just push that off to the side. And now here's our end stop. So on the end stop, what they're saying is that there are three blades on the end stop. And if we look at it, um, it, the blades that you want are the two that are furthest back. And it doesn't designate which one goes where. 
Um, insert the wires labeled Y into the two pins, red circle, no positive and negative of Y switch limit. So there's no positive or negative, so we are just going to plug these in. So one there, and they're just little blade connectors with uh, a little bit of insulation on them so that you know you don't short anything out and that's how they connect right there so that is done now our next bundle which is this bundle right here is going to go to our um, x motor and our uh, limit switch right here so let's go and do that so we're going to plug this into our x motor right like so and I'm going to show you guys something here really quickly these are tabbed okay so these are tabbed I'll give that a second to focus you can see that there's little blades on them on one side you see that over here on this side there's a couple of little blades what you're going to do is you're going to line those up and I think I have a motor behind me I can show you on if you look at a motor, they're always going to have one side that has a cutout. That cutout, you want to make sure that those two blades go into that cutout. And the reason for that is, if you put it in backwards, your motor's not going to work. Okay? So you want to make sure that you do that properly. And when you're taking these out, don't yank on the wires. Try and get your hand around either side. If you have to, use a little screwdriver and pry them up. And that should work out just fine. So we're going to plug that into our X motor. And lastly, we are going to plug in our two blade connectors for our limit switch. And that one is on there. And this one is on here. Not a lot of room for my big fingers to get in there. There we go. It's on there. All right. So now that is where it's supposed to be. Now, what do we do with all that extra cable? We'll figure that out as we get into the next step. Okay, so like I said off camera, we did a few things while you guys were off camera. All right, so off camera, we prepped the panels. Um, this panel here is the panel that goes on this side where your power supply is. This also has uh, the filament detection on it as well and I installed that off camera. And where this panel sits is right in there like so. So it should fit right, right around the little corner brackets that we put in to assemble the machine. And now all we're going to do is we're going to get our uh, screws together and we're going to screw this one on. All right, so we're putting this panel on, and for those people who don't understand how these hammer, T-nut hammer nuts work, they're called a hammer nut because what they do is they turn, and they kind of look like a little hammer on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my overhead camera here, and I'm going to put this down, and I want to demonstrate to you guys exactly how these things go in. So when you're lining up a panel like the one that we're, that we're just going to tighten on here, you, you understand how these things work. So what you do is you put the screw through them just a little bit. You don't have to put it all the way. And then you drop that nut inside the track. Now, of course, this one's going to be too big for this track. Isn't it? There we go. So you drop it into the track like that. Then you take your, uh, your driver. And, of course, this one is too small. Now let's get the proper one for this. So what you do is you just... you basically just turn it and you see how that turns in there that is what locks it into place once it's turned it's locked into place and that's how the nuts on the side panels work and they're a bit of a pain to set up so I'm gonna go and show you uh, tightening up this panel then I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the panels on and we'll show you what that looks like when we are all done and you'll know your panel is secure when everything tightens right down. So I've tightened some of these already 
and now I'm just going to tighten the rest of them. Well, now we're ready to do our final connections on everything that happens up in the business area. So um, we're, we've got three uh, screw-in type connections to make. Now, you can't mess these up. Well, I suppose you could mess them up if you weren't really paying attention to what you're doing. But there are three different size pin patterns. There's a six, an eight, and a four. And they will all correspond with whatever is on the end of your uh, cable. So now these actually, these are keyed so you can't mess them up either. They've got a little notch here on the top. Let me see if I can go to this camera and show it to you. You can see there's a little notch there. Maybe if I go this way, the light catches it. There, you can see that little notch. That will line up with a notch on the power supply or on our, on our control board area. And if you misalign this, you will be in trouble. So try not to misalign this. It pretty much is idiot proof, but people have done it. So uh, we're going to make these connections, put on the rest of the panels, and we'll show you this uh, finished uh, and completed for Max. All right, so we got all the panels on. We've got everything hooked up. We're not going to fire it up today, however. We are going to save that for part two. We're going to fire it up, do a print, and uh, just show you how, how the Formax actually works. Now, was it an easy kit to put together? For the most part, it was. Um, the instructions are what they are. Um, take your time. There are some great instructions online from any cubic on, on YouTube. They've got a great little process to run you through. Um, I am going to go over the technical specs of this right now, though. Um, the build size is 210 by 210 by 300. So you've got a foot tall by eight inches by eight inches, basically. Um, it is a single extruder machine, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, the print speed is anywhere from 20 to 60 millimeters per second. Travel speed is 60 millimeters per second. And supported material, they say right out of the box, is PLA, ABS, hips, and wood. So that's actually quite good. Ambient op operating temperature is 8 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Operational extruder temperature, max of 250. Uh, so you can't go over 250. The bed temperature will go up to 100 degrees Celsius. Um, the sli slicing software that comes with the machine is Cura, which is typical of all these, um, all these types of brands. Um, Cura is a very good piece of software. It's a great piece of software to learn on, uh, and I really encourage everybody to do that. Um, software formats, STL. OBJ and AMF and the operating electrical rating, the input electrical rating, 110 to 220 volts, uh, AC uh, 60 or 50 to 60 hertz. So um, it's about 15.5 kgs uh, when it's all assembled. It has a bottom, it has a top. You can use this to print ABS. It'll print ABS just fine. Um, there's not a lot of excess area that uh, uh, you're going to have a problem with uh, air getting in and spoiling your print. It does has a, have a filament detection out. That's one of the features of this machine, um, which is located on the side uh, where your filament is, and there's a little bracket there on the side for your filament to hang off of. Now, with that said, we are going to stop for today on the 4MAX, but we are going to revisit the 4MAX in part two, and we are going to do our first print. We're going to run through the menu system on part two. Uh, this episode is just getting a little bit long, um, and I'm glad that you stayed with me throughout the whole episode. Thank you very much. Uh, speaking of thank yous, I want to thank all of our Patreons, uh, all of our Patreon subscribers. Uh, without them, we wouldn't have a show. Uh, and also, all of you that have contributed to buy me a coffee. Now, if you want to learn how to help the show, you can go to patreon.com slash the first layer if you'd like to become a Patreon subscriber to the show. Or you can just buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer. If you have any questions for me, you can certainly reach me via email at richard at the first I'll be happy to answer your questions, or you can drop us 
a little something over at our Facebook group, which is called The First Layer as well, or leave me a comment over on YouTube. I check the comments frequently, and I do respond to your questions and uh, your comments. So I want to thank Spool3D for bringing the Formax in so that I could review it and have a look at it. Um, our review is not totally done yet. Putting it together takes a little bit of time, so you might want to set aside an afternoon to get it together. Um, and then uh, it only really takes an afternoon. If you, if you go at it uh, steady, it should only take you about three hours to put together, unlike some other machines that you've probably put together in the past. So print it right, print it with spool3d.ca. They have everything that you need from printers, of course, to filament and all of the parts in between. And if you're going to be in the Calgary area on the 20, from the 26th to the 29th, we're going to be at the Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo in booth 202. I'm going to be there answering all your questions. And uh, there will be printers there, prints, and all kinds of other great stuff in the booth for you guys to come over and have a look at. I'll have keychains there, and I will have for you guys Maker Coins, which were designed by our good friend Chris Anderson, who did a great job on the design of those maker coins. They're actually, they spin. So we'll have stickers to give away and all kinds of great stuff. So stop by, say hi, and until next time, remember my friends that the first layer is always, always the foundation to a great print. See you next time.